Welcome back, everyone, to the Fire Rises mod for Hearts of Iron 4, which you know of this by now, but, uh, I'm your host, Mr. Uh-oh, Russia invades Ukraine. Did you know that? I met the cacophony of escalating tensions and demands by Moscow on their neighbor Ukraine. All negotiations have fell through, as the Russian army has crossed the Russo-Ukrainian border in mass, sparking the U.S. Russo-Ukrainian war. Almost immediately, a rush has been met with a barrage of sanctions, although this has not quashed the momentum of the Russians as they begin advancing through the vast fields of Ukraine, racing to the Dnieper River before NATO forces, who have promised to support Ukraine from reports in the Ukrainian army in time. Meanwhile, reports have begun flooding in of Russia's intentions to also invade the Baltic states and pull in soon after the battle over Ukraine, and as such, NATO has been placed on the highest form of alertness, last seen during the Cuban Missile Crisis. With American troops nowhere in sight due to the ongoing civil conflict in their homeland, the responsibility of holding back the Russian horde has largely been fallen on the European Union, which has become the de facto head of the alliance. Wherever NATO will hold, however, is yet to be determined. Za Rodinu. Um, and we're doing a, a common agricultural policy. Uh, but then we also have this. There's a European war. You get the you get the gist. Russians are invading. Not good. War Escalation 1. Tier 1 focuses on luck. Tier 2, 3, and 4. NATO co conduct coordinated offensives. Well, don't worry, we're just lobbing against the left party. Uh, so yeah, that's going on right now. Um, our, borders, our troops are on the border, ready to go, just in case. You never know. Marines would be nice, but whatever. Uh, let's see, what else we got here? South attack, yes please. So Ukraine is not having a good time. I don't know if we can send a division or volunteers, can we? You can only send one. I don't think we do very much with just one. I can send you in and see what happens, maybe. Yeah, Ukraine's getting it stomped a little bit here and there. All over the place. Ooh, oh, man. Oh, they cut this group off. Oh, but then they cut these guys off. Oh, no. Oh, this is bad. This is really bad for Ukraine. And this mod, at least the Russians are slightly competent compared to real life, but you know, whatever. The goal would be to take these guys out first, crush them, and defend as much as you possibly can. Um... I mean, these guys do have, what, plus 25% defense of core territory? And these guys do have malice to their attack, I think? Russian Armageddon. Um, attack gets bonus. Special military operation, of course. Uh, but they also have fratricidal war. So. We'll do what we can. Skirmishes of the Polish and Belarusian border. Oh, well, oh, there we go. Reports of gunfire and minor skirmishes trickled from the border in the early morning hours. Frantic radio calls for reinforcements were made until these skirmishes were full fledged battles. There's little time to investigate who fired the first shots as the Russian forces began crossing into, over into our territory in an organized counterattack to capture forces while discombobulated. Representatives from NATO met as soon as the reports of combat were made and invoked, voted to invoke Article 5, mobilize their forces. Oh. NATO intervenes in the Ukrainian war. A shocking announcement came from NATO officials in Brussels after the second time in history, with the first being 9-11, Article 5 of the NATO Charter has been invoked. In the last few days, armed skirmishes have occurred between Polish and Russian border troops on this former Polish-Belarusian border. Nobody's certain who shot first, but the last morning's skirmish was at first to erupt into a full, almost full-blown battle. Diplomats on both sides have called for negotiations and hoped that the crisis would fizzle out upon an agreement being struck from both sides. However, no such negotiations, negotiations are to occur as NATO officials have instead with a strong majority invoked Article 5 with one NATO official from the UK citing that there is no room for negotiations when a direct attack has been conducted on a NATO member. Already almost every nation in the eastern flank of NATO has invoked a national state of emergency and immediate mobilization of their respective armed forces. The Russian Foreign Ministry released a short but ominous statement claiming that Russia will mobilize and execute the use of whatever military assets available to defend its national sovereignty. Made assistance from both Russia and major Western countries, I posted videos on the internet showing military formations racing to Eastern Europe, luckily for the hostilities that are estimated to break out in the next few hours. The ongoing war in Ukraine will certainly find itself as the main battleground between Russia and NATO, as officials from Brussels have announced that NATO military force will be further used to, defense, to defend Ukraine along with NATO member states. For the first time since 1945, a major conventional war between multiple major nations is about to unfold on the continent. Europeans and analysts across the continent have been less speechless, as many fear the untold amount of death and destruction that will soon follow, as major nuclear arms, armed nations with large armies go for war. A war between Europeans is a civil war. It's begun. Alright, so do we attack? Do you not do anything there? Um, if that's the case, we're gonna just go ahead and... Oh. Are we at war? Uh. They're at war with these guys. Oh, man. Oh, so you're... Uh, do I... The AI's gonna make us join the war, aren't they? Oh, 
don't think we're supposed to do this. I don't think we're supposed to do that yet. Oh, where are you at? Hello. There you go. We are at war. Well, there goes the trade deal with them. And Turkey immediately starts attacking like crazy. Well, what you really want to do is going around. I don't think we're supposed to do it like this, but, you know, this is my first time doing this. What's this? Oh, heck yeah, I'll take that stuff. The goal is to encircle. Encircle, encircle, encircle. It's not much to start with, but, I mean, it's something. There you go. You can help out here, too. My god, is Ukraine falling apart. Is this a good idea? Probably not. Did I screw it up? Probably did. It's alright. It's only a few divisions. I mean, in the end, it's not going to be very much, but, you know. We'll do what we can here. And they're going to hop over there next. Battle of Kiev. Russian forces have captured Kiev from the Ukrainian government, signaling the start of NATO intervention in the Ukrainian war. The Russian victory in Kiev was a uh, culmination of a series of military successes against Ukrainian forces, which began the capture of Chernobyl in the eastern previous weeks. The Russians are taking control of eastern Ukrainian city of Donetsk, and are rapidly advancing on Kiev from the north and south. The fall of Kiev was a crushing blow to the Ukrainian government, which had been desperately trying to hold on to the country's largest city. Kiev is also the capital of Ukraine, and its loss was a huge propaganda victory for the Russians. The fighting in Kiev was one of the heaviest in the entire war, and resulted in the death of thousands of Ukrainian soldiers and civilians. The city was left in ruins, and its population was traumatized by the violence. While the Ukrainian government has relocated to Lviv, or Lviv in the west, and stated that it would continue fighting until all of Ukraine is liberated from the Russian invaders, many wonder how much longer the war torn country can last. The war escalates. Add 25 days of mission at war exhaustion. Oh. There they go. Good. They're gonna, I'm sure that this will be fine. Uh, up next, we gotta go in and push them around some more. Now they're really trying here. Sure. Volunteers enlist. Our war against the Red Menace has become a call for those in our society who lay dormant. Millions of patriots are trying to enlist, ready to join the army and fight the menace that threatens their homes. Our recruiting centers are working over time to also all the papers. Their drive to defend Europe will always be remembered, for their names will be entered into the history books. May they serve as well. Well, we'll see after our agricultural stuff. The pro is offensive. It's time to go in the offensive. We must coordinate an attack with the other NATO nations if we wish to be successful. Sure. Oh! Yep, there goes us. We want to be nice and focused to make encirclements. So let's go back down here and do this. You're going to go to COVID. This is a bad idea to war right now. Native command is not offensive. Okay. Well, we tried. Oh, they're, they're definitely pushing us back now. Farming development increased. Well, at least we got farming development increased. Well, yep, looks like we're probably going to lose this war in the end. Oh, it's over here. It's over here. Baptism by fire. Hold the Baltics. Yeah, that'd probably be important. Entrenchment mm -hmm. speed. Hold the line, defend your family. Victory at hand. Recovery rate. Patriarch duty, that sounds good to me. Oh crap, they're actually destroying our divisions. Well, I don't like that. Holy crap, these guys are attacking extraordinarily fast. But, you know, like I said, the longer we drive the war, the harder it will be for us to fight. Uh, I'm going to go back and not get my guys encircled. That's really bad. That's actually extremely bad. Um, yeah, that's not bad. That's not good. Operation Eisenhammer. 
or speed or attack against these countries. Service legacy equipment. Deliver excess equipment to Ukraine. Well, in the Ukraine war, or Ukraine greatly extends the Russian front. And there it opens a vulnerability both to the Russian caucus and to Moscow itself. We can exploit it, but only if Ukraine doesn't fall apart. To ensure this, we should prop up their military. Well, service legacy equipment. Uh, G3 is still a 762 firing gun. It is, in fact, a heavier round than the G36 or our newly adopted HK416 fires. A G3 kills just as well as any other gun in service. So we're handing them out of the troops. Operation Eisenhammer. General Major General Oras Manit replaces Federal Chancellor. The Bundestag has attempted to remain functional throughout this period of geopolitical chaos. We've been successful up until the war in Ukraine, the delicate balance we've been holding has been thrown aside. Thus, General Oretkar Oras Manit has offered to take a temporary position as Federal Chancellor. May solve our issues. Um, they keep encircling me, like they're literally popping up divisions inside my where I'm at. So this is kind of ridiculous. Uh, this is honestly really stupid too. Leave, I don't want to get my divisions encircled. Sorry, Vilnius, but you're not worth it. Besides, we need to reinforce this area here too. But it's pretty much a bloodbath. Like, we cannot win because we don't have air superiority. They have absolute air superiority. Not sure how comms would get this type of air superiority, but you know what? I want it. We ain't gonna get it, but whatever. Yeah, I didn't think you could win that battle. Hey, at least it's Circle 1 Division. At least that's nice. And of course, Ukraine already fell, but whatever. That's pretty much expected. They're gone. And Romania's about to die. So. Yeah, we're gonna go with this one. No, we're gonna go with this one. We need more equipment and such. Hello? Hey, yes, we made encirclement. That's good. Uh, I do not want to get encircled. So, here. The AI wants to do encirclements. I'm okay with that. I don't want to lose the divisions. Yeah. Oh, and there goes Estonia. Sure, we'll take whatever you have. Uh, Syria occupies northern territory. So let's look at the Middle Eastern region. We've seen a lot of uh, instability this decade, and for that many are prone to blaming not only interpolitical, ethnic, and economic problems on local countries, but also numerous interventions of uh, foreign powers in the region's affairs, even at the beginning of the Second American Civil War. The region's, uh, some foreign forces still remained to uphold a certain status quo. One such force was Turkey until recently. With all of Europe again dragging into the war with Russia, the anti-Turkish forces in Syria saw this as an opportunity to get rid of their presence, organizing demonstrations and other acts that undermine their authority. At the same time, unusually large convoys of military equipment were seen moving in Aleppo and Latakia. Seeing this, it seems the government of Turkey has decided to withdraw its forces from the region to fully focus on the European war. This may mark the end of NATO's presence in Syria for the first time in over 10 years. Erdogan's empire crumbles. Better time with that one. Hey, we did something though. Better not get encircled. I don't mind picking up your pieces and encircling enemies, but still. Russian army storms over Vilnius. A harrowing highlight of the war in Eastern Europe was the violent battle of Vilnius, the capital of Lithuania, in which NATO forces were resoundingly defeated by tactics resembling that of a World War II era blitzkrieg after Russian armored corps pushed NATO forces out from the outskirts of the city, while Spetsnaz forces rooted out any allied resistance from the streets uh, now of the now occupied city. With the fall of Vilnius, marking the end of NATO's hold on the Baltic states, the momentum of the Russian giant sees no end in sight, as the next expected target for the Russian army is aiming to be Warsaw. While NATO has managed to stay coordinated in its defenses, their odds of holding out in Poland are uncertain. A harrowing defeat for NATO. Look, man, I just want y'all to hold. We already lost Brest. Well, I guess that was their territory to begin with, but whatever. You're literally here just to hold the line. And you can't even do that. I mean, they've got a crap ton of mechanized, which is kind of insane to see and look at. But still. We're not going to fight over there. We're here, literally here just to defend. Well, let's get improved command equipment. At least that's nice. Let's get more initiative, too. It's not going great for us. Yep. And they flipped them over. That's really bad for us. Now, so, piercing-wise... Oh, we can't even pierce them. Well, that'll do it. Oh, I guess we can technically pierce them. But still. Like. Bro. Um. 
pierce the armor of one enemy division. But it says the other one, the other division, actually can't be pierced. So it's just leaving me with a bit of confusion. One enemy division would be 100% of damage. Two could deal 65% of damage. One, well, deal 50%. So that goes Molly. Huh. Yeah, push these guys out maybe. They're better on attack than defense. Oh crap! They're just storming through this area here. Oh crap! Yeah. Hello. European War Escalation Level Four. Yeah. Patriotic duty recovery rate. I should probably recover pretty quickly. But you know what? Like people said, if we can't do well here. It is what it is. We'll do the best we can. But there's still content even if we lose a war, so. What is this? National Recruitment Drive? Mobilize the economy? It's a bit late for that. You get a few more military factories and whatnot, but still. Taking a Canyon yeah, VG. So, mobilize the economy. Operation Coal? So they're losing here. Welcome to the war front. Yeah, well, knowing this, next time I'm going to throw on a crap ton of uh, anti air, regardless of armor leakage or lowering. Uh, it would be artillery. Depending on who plays, I might just play the Soviets next time, just because, I mean, this seems like a lot of fun. Yeah. Well, all the Baltics have fallen. So it's now October. Do they have any penalties yet? Or exhaustion? No. Principal Legendary. Uh. Autocratic State, Soviet Storm. March 22nd. Wow. That seems kind of. Operation Rokosovsky. That's kind of insane. How much extra benefits they get, like over us, just just cause, bruh. Yeah. It's... Europeans get what they want. I mean, they, we have no planes. We're destined to lose. So, <sighs> and that really sucks. I don't want to lose. And Warsaw's going to fall soon. I do not want to get closed here. Well, we tried. I think the Russians are just too... They have too much strength. But then again, you know, we're here for fun. Let's see what happens. They retreat. Get out of there. Oh god, are they enabling baiting? We got to we had a navy too. I'm about ready to lose my entire naval uh, fleet here, and that's all right. Sub cooldown. It's fine. See what you can do. Warsaw is captured. Well, defend the north the best we can. I'm surprised Romania's not falling yet, but then again, I mean, the capital's right in the crosshairs here. Uh-huh. Combine arms. Sure, we'll grab you too. Holy crap! It's that air superiority, man. That's what's making us lose this war. We just can't compete against it. Do we have anti-air at all? We do have support anti-air. That one does. Right. self propel we don't have that. Let's support anti-air. How's America looking right now? Yeah, that's about what I expected. Biden's holding out there in Indianapolis as the capital. Look at that. Oh, wait, I mean, uh, Michael Bloomberg. Michael 
Caleb Malpin and the Patriot Front, I mean, they're going to get smashed really hard in the end anyway, so. Two to four million left. Half a million, three to eight million. Tons of divisions, tons of people. Oh, you do something cool? Hey! We lost a ship with some ten enemies. It's not bad. Stop letting him in. Stop it. Roland cannot fall. Probably will. Uh, intensify nighttime sorties. Our spirit thermal and night vision optics have improved our ability to attack at night, especially in the air. We must press this advantage and bombard positions all night for as long as it takes. That's probably a good idea. Oh, there's a rock. But whatever. National recruitment drive. The Bundeswehr desperately needs new volunteers. Let's help the pension benefits and provide a sign-on bonus. And we'll promise them a good deal on the BMW. Yes, recruit shall flood offices soon enough. Why not? Hello. Hey. Well, at least we're getting them a little bit here and there. It's not going to do much in the end. The Iraqi Ba'atis returned to power. Historic events happen in Iraq as the loyalists of the former president Saddam Hussein, led by Izzat Ibrahim al Dori, have emerged victorious in the ongoing Iraqi civil war, declaring the restoration of a Ba'atis rule across the country. The announcement comes days just after al Dori's sudden passing. Look at that. Oh. Good sense here, too. Now, the civil war saw al Dori's forces comp comprise of former Ba'atis party members and military loyalists mount a significant offensive against the rival factions. Their strategic maneuvers and effective mobilization of resources that allow them to capture key targets and cities. Until Abbas addressed shortly before his death, Al Dori proclaimed the reestablishment of the Ba'ath Party as the legitimate governing authority in Iraq, urging citizens to unite under its banner for stability and national pride. We have reclaimed our homeland from chaos and division, he clearly declared, calling for a new era of governance and rooted in the principles of the Ba'ath Party. However, just hours after this momentous declaration, reports surfaced of Al Dori's unexpected passing due to health complications. Salah al Mukhtar quickly took over as interim leader. As Ba'atis loyalists celebrate their victory, the threat of Iranian intervention looms larger than ever. Iran has historically opposed any resistance of Ba'atis rule, but it a direct challenge to its influence in the region. Saddam's blood avenged. Hello. Planes available in reserve. Well, if we use these planes, they are immediately going to get destroyed. Yeah, I mean, these guys are just attacking so hard, you can't do anything. We are Germans trying to help hold Polish territory, but to what? Oh, there goes a rock. To what purpose? They're literally almost at our own borders. I'm very surprised. Oh, Man, is still holding on, but just barely. Neil Brinkman, keep it up, man. Get all y'all's boys in there. Alright, so what's this? Oh! And then there were two contenders. Well, really, two contenders. They have the Native Americans there. Navajo, but whatever. I have a feeling Patriot Front's probably not gonna make it. Just like us. Oh! Slovak Social State. And our territory is the front line. Front line territory now. How many men have we lost? 19,000. That's actually not too bad. We've only killed 10,000, though, so that's not good. So, what happens when we lose? Because they're just flooding in through everywhere. Without a Budapest. Hungary, uh, Russia def definitively tipped the scales in war against NATO, having finally captured the Hungarian capital of Budapest in a year-long conquest conflict. Russia swept through Eastern Europe, subjugating countless nations through the campaign, taking the Hungarian city of Budapest in decisive victory. In a year-long wait of attrition, Russian forces have pushed NATO into a corner, outmatching them in every aspect of warfare. Despite the best efforts of NATO forces, the scale maneuverability of Russian forces proved too much for the defense lines to contain. 
As a few remaining NATO forces withdrew, it was clear that the tide had finally turned in Russia's favor. Though celebrations were happening throughout the Russian homeland, a sense of doom was settled in the now Russian-controlled region of Eastern Europe. The features and stern, with many of its inhabitants fearing retaliation or worse. Uncertainty is high in Hungary with the surrounding nations as they struggle to comprehend the new reality of a Russian-dominated Eastern Europe. For now, Russia's victory is all but certain. NATO is faltering. Yep, is that NATO or Russia or Hungary or what's going on? Shot Aina Kamaradin. Oh, oh! It is raining. Well, rain has come, but nature tends to find the right moments to make it rain. God in mind feeling the water drop down on him when Russia invaded Europe. It was raining bullets and rockets. He would have to treat that without any hesitation. He's been silently staring at the gravestone of his fallen colleague. He could still remember when he proudly announced he was expecting a child soon back home. He was expected, excited, and excited to raise him in a Germany that was proud and strong again, a Germany that redeemed itself in history for the sins of its past. That Germany would never exist, and his friend would never raise a child. The mind he stepped on made sure of that. Karl clenched his fist, grinding his teeth every day as he reminded of the bitter defeat. Germany was weak, too held back by its sins, and willingness to go all out against an enemy that had no moral qualms over its expansionism. As grief and his anger started to blend together, twisting and turning into a hateful state of mind. This Germany had failed him, his friend and everyone else who sought and fought and bled for Europe, always doubling down on anti-extremism, always flat, uh, flagellating themselves just so that the world would accept them for what? Russia's won, that's for certain, but he knows he's not alone in his anger at both his own country and the barbaric nation. Something has to be done. If not for his lost friend, then for Germany, he kept staring at the gravestone, thinking about the course the nation should take. Extremism has been on the rise in Germany again, rightfully so. The communists blame the corrupt government, who has traded their own sovereignty for corporations, those bloodsuckers who have been restraining on Germany's military capability, and in turn causing them to lose. The far right has been growing just as much. The internationalism on the current government has forgotten that the German people matter the most. Through the enemies of the gates and the country, slowly but surely pushing the German people to cultural and ethnic dead end, both desire revenge, revenge against the status quo, the revenge against Russia. Karl Sy, the veterans of the First War, have the potential to shape Germany's future. He looked up in the sky and made his decision into where he will finish what his country should have finished long ago. Those responsible will pay for this disgrace. Oh. Volunteer military. Civilian economy. So we've lost the war. So now it's the Union of Soviet Socialist Republics. Oh, and they unify all those nations there. Wow. And now it was this Polish People's Republic. It's a corridor up here. Look at that. Unstable government. Do they have any neat books? No, they don't. And then we have the Republic of Poland. That is left. We have you guys here too. Huh. And what's the anocracy? Okay, so you came back. You you never died, but unstable government. You guys are still here. You're actually a Russian puppet. So Okay, so that completely just combobulated everything here. So North Atlantic Treaty Organization is here. Czech Republic is now independent. Classical liberals. Excellent NATO unity, so what's going on here? Got the demo room. How did it come to this? Oh boy. The Soviet Union has returned, shocking the entire international community as a union that had once dominated the Eastern Bloc during the Cold War, only to meet its end at the hand of Gorbachev's reforms, and secessionism has returned in the form of announcement shortly after the end of the Russo-Ukrainian War. The first premier of the Rafael Soviet Union, Gennady Zyuganov, had held a televised speech, firstly praising the bravery of Russian troops during the successful special military operation, comparing them to the champions of the Great Patriotic War, whilst addressing the reformation of the Soviet Union and restoration of Russia's status as a superpower. NATO's unilaterally to condemn the formation as an attack on world peace. While many nations in Africa and Asia went on to declare their support and recognition of the new Soviet Union, as the newly formed scars in Eastern Europe were continue healing after Russia's unexpected victory against NATO, it is expected that Russia will soon follow their victory by pursuing the reformation of the global sphere of influence in light of the power vacuum left by the greatest rival's collapse. Zavrodinu. Oh, would you look at this? Universal faith in the revolution is already the beginning of the revolution. There you go. Yeah, I think these guys are going to lose. German economy collapses. Oh, god dang it. Are you... <clears throat> We already tried this once. To pay for the large costs it took to fight uh, the Russians during the Russian NATO war, the Federal Republic of Germany took out large loans in order to fund the rapid military expansion done during the war. While the Bundestag has initially planned to, p to pay off the debts using Russian war operations, some of that did not come to materialize, materialize as Xeno forces were forced out of Eastern Europe, with the value of the Euro and German bonds going into free fall following the Vienna Peace Accords, compounded with a sudden collapse in military production demand, economic shock is crippled. Worse, confidence in the Eurozone is at an all-time low with the region struggling to recalibrate its economy following the loss of the Eastern European markets. With the Frankfurt Stock Exchange dropping 35% in a single day, holy crap, the largest in financial history, economists predict a period of unprecedented economic catastrophe. Already hyperinflation has begun to spiral, with the value of the euro to the Chinese renminbi 
increasing from 7.39 to 13.81 in a week. <clears throat> At this time, the Deutsche Bundesbank thinks, faces an economist's worst nightmare, a massive budget deficit combined with rapid inflation. No matter the action, the German future looks bleak. As is ein Katastrophe. Oh boy, what the poverty development. Well, what do you get, you know? Oh, and there goes Kuwait. See, without America doing stuff here, we're all dying. Oh, government announces austerity measures. Well, of course it does. In response to the collapse of the euro and the Frankfurt stock market crash, the Bundestag has passed an emergency budgetary reform, advocating for cuts in welfare, increasing the retirement age, and possible privatization of some industries. While the euro's value and free fall, advocates of an austerity measure have stated that they are necessary for monetary stabilization and prevent hyperinflation amid the economic downturn, nevertheless. The moves have been incredibly unpopular as riots have already broken out in major cities such as Frankfurt, Berlin, and Cologne as the police and protesters once again take it to the streets. Germany's domestic situation looks increasingly tenuous as the chaos consumes the nation. Maybe the protesters should open an economics book. Extra fuel tanks, scattered bombs. I'm not sure that's really worth it. Air-to-air -air precision missiles. Mm, that might be worth it, actually. Well, we gave it the old Rambler try. Hey, we still have a ship, though. Go train. Zolm. Just like the wars of the past are their own tales and myths, this war has recently got one in themselves. When we first were forced to retreat, we heard the reports left, left behind tank crew with a leopard too. Assuming the worst, we already paid our honors to them. However, when we pushed the Russians back, we stumbled upon a brutal scene. On a wide field, we found the remains of an entire Russian company surrounding a lone leopard too, covered in bullet holes and dents and broken tracks. We made the conclusion that the tank crew made a brave last stand against the Russian army and have ensured they wouldn't go down that easily. However, we weren't able to find the crew back. Not even the remains, and it will remain a mystery of what happened to them. But we will not forget their noble stand against the Russian invasion, and will be sure that their families will receive a Bundeswehr cross of honor for valor in their names. Ludwig Keller, Jan Weber, Otto Bayer, and Jakob Richter will be the names that will never be forgotten for the valiant stand and will be a source of inspiration for our forces. See you in Valhalla. So, with them winning, do they get any... Ah, army integration? I would expect that this would do. be pretty bad. Economic Cooperation, Operation Polar Star... They don't. They honestly do not need extra boss against us. They're already extremely strong. Uh, Victor the European War. Mm. Autocracy. Administrative integration. Economic integration. They need some heavy, heavy penalties. Like, they don't need any boss. I mean, with all the industry that they had, that they're given. But that's just my opinion. How did it come to this? Our armies were defeated, our uh, allies were crushed. No promised recovery. Yeah. Uh, our country was bombed, our people were slaughtered. And for what? For the Brussels bureaucrats? For the corporations? For the migrants? We came into this war expecting an easy victory, yet the elite's mismanagement brought us all down. As the mothers, daughters, and wives desperately searched for the remains of their husbands, the government has no one to, bl to blame but itself. Lord, give us strength. Also, we did switch to uh, uh, Hamas, who's Palestinian. Okay, okay, of course. Um. Balanced trade. We still have extremely high taxes, which we should probably get rid of, in all honesty. We'll probably go down to high taxes because we don't need this much extra money. Monthly change, 28 billion. Uh, well, 28 billion is quite a bit, but still. We have do have the low interest rates. So I do want to get to moderate interest rates. At the very least, we want high interest rates. There's some construction speed though, nationwide riots. We've done this to ourselves. Oh, yeah, you have. Greek government over the throne. This wouldn't be a bad to do either. After the devastating defeat suffered by the hands of the Russians over the war in Eastern Europe, the internal situation in Greece has become a ticking time bomb. The Greek economy, reeling already from the economic aftereffects of the Second American Civil War and the collapse of the Middle East, has completely caved into itself, exacerbated by the desperate actions of the government during the wartime. The Greek Golden Dawn, a neo-fascist movement now finding itself with a rapidly growing support base, has sent an army of 10,000 supporters to march on Athens, forcing the government to step down. As the government's been overthrown, a dangerous power vacuum is left open as a gaping wound, with the military not on a particular side and a fraction of the populace only loyal. There isn't much time for the situation in Greece quickly ignites in a civil conflict. A new dawn rises in Greece. Well, good luck, guys. The Hellenic state. How's America looking? Uh, revolution in Greece. As the Golden Dawn consolidates a grip on the country, the left wing, opposition in place before the government had to cry the neo fascist movement, denouncing the government and party and its leader, Nikolaos. Michalokos. As political violence began reaching its peak, the major left-wing forces of the Greek political scene, scenes such as Syriza, K 
KKE and various anarchist groups had declared the government illegitimate. Various opposition politicians and parties that escaped the march from Athens have retreated to an undisclosed location. A televised address that hijacked the current broadcast in Greece had declared the Democratic People's Republic of Greece. As a televised address was cut off, an uprising was launched by the rival government. Far left militias were formed by the DPRG to use control of key areas and supply depots. And as soon as they did, the government instantly retaliated with bombings and incursions into the DPRG held areas. History may not always repeat, but it often rhymes. And often, sometimes, it might just do both. History repeats itself. And you know, I've seen that comment a lot. History may not always repeat, but it often rhymes. We talk about that in the stock market, too. Ah, Democratic People. Uh, People's Republic of Greece. Socialists. Versus Golden Dawn neo Nazis. Alright. Knowing we're prob where we're probably heading, we're probably going to send them volunteers anyways. Well, look at all these guys. We do not have an Air Force anymore anyways, so... Iran intervenes in Iraq. With the Iraq ex re experienced the chaos from the past and violence reaching an all-time high, it will be a matter of time before foreign intervention was on the table, however. Who would do it remain a question. A question was answered as reports of Iranian troops crossing the Iraqi border reached international news. The Iranian government has stated that with American influence gone in Iraq, all the pent-up anger has finally been able to be released. Such violence is a major threat to peace in the Middle East and therefore justifies the peacekeeping action into Iraq. Experts have already concluded that it won't be an easy mission for Iran, but its success is almost guaranteed. They still have honor, though COVID-19 still exists. However, protests have arisen as well as other nations in the Middle East such as Israel and several Gulf states as this is seen as a means to increase influence in the region. Ah, nuclear program. However, protests have arisen as well from the other nations in the Middle East, uh, and rumors of Iranian plans to push further into the Middle East have arisen, which has caused great concern for the rivals of Iran, as they've already put their military on high alert. Anti-government sentiment, huh? Whether this peacekeeping mission will be the last of Iranian military activity or not remains yet to be seen. The lions it shows its fangs. Ooh. Revolution Guard Corps. Glory Islamic Revolution. White flags. Well, that's not bad, but still. War of Resistance. Oh, who needs stability? Base value 72%. Inflation, negative 159%. Oh, shh, Nikes. We have a lot of liquidity. Oh, my God. Consumer goods factors. Um. Got a demo room. Isn't that the name of the new DLC? Nuclear factory, nuclear factory construction speed, Bundeswehr, national catastrophe, cap. We got excellent NATO unity still, though. Economic downturn. I don't see where it says, like, inflation is so bad. Stability is bad. We no longer have this uh, stuff over here. Excavation, construction speed. We're gonna promise recovery. Give me a NATO. Modify culture demo. Remove, remove Bundeswehr. Completely remove the Bundeswehr. Dissolution of NATO. Palestine announces final in the da. Oh, goodbye NATO. Uh, oh, hello. In a move that surprised many, uh, uh, but few in the Middle East, many abroad, Palestinian militants began a surprise offensive with multiple uh, Israeli military targets. Multiple Islamist groups, such as Hamas, have announced attacks as a final in intifada against Israel. Aiming to give it all to boot Israeli military presence out of Gaza and the West Bank. Already, the IDF is reporting multiple massive engagements with Islamist forces across the country, with losses on both sides occurring. The Israeli government has not taken kindly to the attacks, claiming retribution against the terrorists and all those who harbor them. Regardless, citizens of both Jewish and Arab descent are fearful, as the exploding conflict has already caused significant death and destruction. It is very possible that the actions of the Palestinian militants could lead to a wider war in the region. Chaos in the Middle East? <sighs> who could have seen that one coming? Oh, Netanyahu, huh? Vanguard of the Jews. And you, Arab League member. Well, whatever. How are we doing here? It's probably best you just hold out or something. I don't think this will go well for us fighting in the mountains and hills, but I could be wrong.
KSK behaving erratically. Get these fools back here. It's a lot of fascism. Faction not detected. The AFD is not very popular. The Link is getting more popular. The High Mat's getting more popular. Spain got in violence. Oh. Oh my god, Spain. Look at this guy. Oh. Royal Ulster Coalition for King and Country. Huh. Unstable Royal Coalition. Storm Gaelic. Irish Republicanism. Dreams of One Ireland. From Russia with Love. That makes sense. What the barnacles happen here? Crusade against European Socialism. Classical Fascism. Uh, who are you? Galician, Galician Liberation Front. Los Chalinas. Mass looting. Empire Vice. Any of you guys? Rep Republican Spain. You're back. Kingdom of Spain. We go to Franco. Pan Mediterraneanism. Cap. Well, we got the Spanish Civil War again. Catalonia and Barcelona. Even Portugal is like, I'm gonna kill myself. Well, hope you're learning something here. The Catalan Revolution, the Spanish public in Western Europe, are shocked with the unilateral declaration of independence of the Spanish province of Catalonia. Spain is no stranger to separatist movements, especially in the last few decades. Out of all the territories of Spain, the Basque region of Catalonia have been the most persistent with calls for independence, with the independence parties and movements prominent in local politics, however. It seems that the recent wave of unrest and discontent within Spain has given these regions the opportunity to do what many local activists struggle to do for years. Within the last day, Catalan politicians declared their unilateral independence from Spain to much fanfare by the local population, claiming that the town was right for Catalonia to assert its sovereignty. Madrid has swiftly condemned the act, claiming it to be completely illegal, as much as there is strong will to act now may prove impossible as there is very little will by the local Spanish authorities to reign in the rogue province, as well as local Catalans have overwhelmingly joined in on the move for independence along with other issues currently plaguing the Spanish state. Some within Spain and Western Europe have also raised the fear that separatism might spread and that mass anarchy is imminent. Unfortunately, Catalonia's independence has only fueled those fears to a dangerous extent. Another Spanish civil war? Well, I guess. Still again there. Are we actually in the battle? No, I guess somewhat. I'm surprised we're not getting taking any attrition. March on Rome. Hello. Military junta. Widespread corruption. Pan Mediterraneanism. Giving with NATO. Well, NATO's dead. Riots. Palestine's gone. Then what? Facet omnia voluntas. Remove Deutsches Wehrmachtness. It's good. Add mass civil unrest. Not good. Well, new decision category. New German political sphere. Riots. Massive civil unrest. New focuses. We can still support the orphans, but probably not. Sorry, orphans. Nothing personal. Need love too. The president has been assassinated. Oh, that's great. In a tragic turn of events, the president of Germany has been assassinated today in Berlin, the second shockwaves across the nation and the international community. The tragic incident occurred amidst the dissolution of NATO and the unprecedented rise of far right parties in Germany, fueling speculation about potential connections between the shooter and right wing extremist groups. The assassination took place during a public address by the president. As he addressed a crowd gathered in front of the Brandenburg Gate, a lone gunman opened fire, fatally wounding the president before being subdued by the security forces. Despite immediate and medical tension, the president succumbed to his injuries on the way to the hospital. Shocking. So if not max up, oh, oh no, okay. German president assassinated. There you go. Well, I just read this, so happens. Hey, good job, guys. We're gonna go here next. They're really stacking a lot of soldiers in here. Hope you're learning. Yeah, it looks like he is. Elite forces are nice. Might be able to win here, maybe. They're smartly moving there, but whatever. Still only have two dockyards. Store holes. 
No, we don't have a lot of a lot of ships, do we? Hey, there you go. So hello, Victorious in Western Africa. Hello, Draco in Germany. Oh, I've been, uh, well, following the devastating loss in the war with Russia, uh, extremist elements of the Bundeswehr have cooed the government. Black clad KSK special forces have marched on Berlin, facing nearly no resistance. As leopards surrounded the Bundestag, Berliners stood in stone silence as many politicians were put in front of the kangaroo courts and sentenced to death for crimes against the German nation. The leader of the coup, a mass figure named the Redosfeuer, has stated that the degeneration of the German people and the nation shall be halted today. Martial law has been instated throughout the nation with shoot to order, kill orders being filled for violators of the curfew. The civilian government has been temporarily suspended, with the military command in power with the Radosphere at the lead. Nearly immediately, other nations such as France and the UK suspended relations due to authoritarian measures in the nation. As Europe stays reeling after the loss of the Russia, Russian NATO war, it seems that other nations fall into extremism. Radosphere becomes the leader for the Fascist Party. A Fourth Reich? Hey, you got boxes. Radosphere there. Alarming news arrives out of Germany today as the German Bundeswehr and the security services have temporarily, or apparently, coup the German civil government. Tragedy has already struck the German Germany in recent times as the loss of the newly reformed USSR both through the German military and political establishment into a standing turmoil. The public and many political organizations are in uproar over Germany's failure to defeat the Soviets, but these new developments top everything that has come before. Top officers in the Army, Air Force, and Navy, all backed by select infantry units and special forces operatives in the KSK, have announced that they are enforcing Germany's legal, moral, and constitutional mandate against the elected civil government. In Berlin and other cities, top politicians have already been arrested, the Bundestag has been indefinitely suspended, and a group of officers now head the government instead of the Chancellor. Already up unpopular with the public, elected officials could only watch helplessly as the military arrested and dismissed most of the government. Analysts and citizens alike, both in Germany and abroad, suspect this plot is by the military to be part of the Day X plan, formed in secret by officers in the German military since the 2010s. Other major NATO nations have condemned the coup, with many citing that it is a wild and repulsive desecration of democracy and rule of law. The world is still beyond belief to see such a rich, liberal, democratic, and highly developed Western nation fall into such chaos, chaos and authoritarianism. This is all absurd. Oh, the only thing that matters is that we stand firm. My truth is my loyalty. Deutschland erwacht. Sterilize the regimes. Revive the economy. Revive the armed forces. Well, I guess we're going to Deutschland erwacht. Well then. Now, our country's been poisoned by years of liberal globalist decadency. The main reason we've lost the war was that our people forgot. Oh, what it's like to be a great country, and frankly, it's time to remind them. Daily fascist support. Tackle the riots. Massive civil unrest. Zone. Uh, well, alright, we do what we must. German peoples with a state. They will bow to the true masters. We've done this to ourselves. Wow. We have no political power, so what are we supposed to do? Fourth Arab Israeli War. Well, what do you expect? Fear and horror grip the Middle East as a state of war now exists between multiple Arab nations and the state of Israel. Last night, rockets, artillery, and bombs rained down upon multiple cities and military targets in Israel, along with the confirmed moving of armored and mechanized divisions into Israeli territory from neighboring Arab states. The governments of the warring coalition of Arab states has only issued a single proclamation to the international community claiming that the war is an attempt to punish Israel for criminal actions committed over the span of many years. A state of emergency. An immediate war mobilization has been enacted by Israel, with the Office of the Presidency stating that all of our enemies will pay an apocalyptic price for their aggression. Calls for peace and mediation issued from abroad after the addresses have been ignored, with fierce fighting already engulfing most of the country along with more expected in the next few days. Many in the region, and the world can only speculate how much death and destruction will happen even before the notion of peace will be in sight. Chaos spreads. Yeah, the Patriot Front's probably going to lose. It's going to be a very red world. American socialism. The fairy of secedes. Whoa. I did not see that one coming. Revolutionary industry. Oh, they're probably pretty strong still. 6 to 12 million. Holy crap. 3 to 4 million. Economic reconstruction, political cornucopia, second continent army. Welcome. Marcus Soda. Disgusted democracy. Legacy of Strauss. Bavarian identity. Scatterbrain economy. Seems like we're going to have to deal with some issues here. 
French generals launched another coup. Terrible news coming out of France as an attempted coup by the French military has thrown the nation into turmoil. Oh, I haven't seen this one yet. Mm -hmm. uh, like many other Western nations, the recent defeat in the war with the Russians caused a great uproar within the French society and politics. The French military, always keen on preserving its role in government and society, has done the unthinkable. A group of high-ranking officers in the French military and intelligence services have moved on Paris and other major cities. These officers publicly claim that they are here to move, remove the criminally incompetent politicians who betrayed French natural interests. However, it appears that the attempt to seize power by this group of officers have been met with great hostility and outrage both in the public and even within the military. Major public protests have kicked off to crown the clique of officers attempting to seize power along with, the most ma with major political party leaders condemning the officers in a similar manner. Most interestingly enough, a large contingent of officers and soldiers have banded together to oppose and resist the coup plotters. Many high-ranking members of the French military not involved in the attempted coup have come out and declared that they would stop the illegal and dangerous seizure of power by the coup plotters. Analysts both in France and abroad doubt that the coup plotters would eventually succeed, and one of the intrigue and other nefarious things would continue to have no effective action was taken to stabilize the nation. Even though many politicians of France have called for calm, the chaos unfolding in French society only seems to be spreading further. French Socialist Republic, huh? Economic collapse. Now that's France for you. And Le Pen is here. Republic of Brittany. National defense. Hey, he's got a hat. Are you back, Belgium? Ugh. Elizabeth I is kind of pretty. First of her name, Queen of all Belgians, but you should not exist. Oh, who are you? Uh, Alsace Occupation Authority. Well, can we claim you? European naval forces in Europe. Oh. Well, all right then. Oh, well, this is Spanish national state. And there goes France. Oh, wait, they declare war in the Netherlands as well? Lowlander Union. Look at that hair. Wow. Battle of Paris. France looks on with horror as a scourge of modern warfare finally reached and devastated the French capital of Paris. Within the last few months, politicians and citizens alike within France remain confident that the world could be kept to the east of the country, sparing or sparing major cities of destruction. However, it could seem that the French military cannot keep France's enemy at bay as a battle for Paris attests. French forces describe the battle force of the sea as one of desperation and savagery. Infantry battled apartment block to apartment block, tanks and APCs turning large boulevards into impassable killing fields and grenades and RPGs blew streets into crater jungles of crudo concrete. Famous monuments like the Eiffel Tower now lie battered and ruined by artillery, rocket, and drone strikes. Losses for the French defenders ran high, and the contingent delegated to defend the city has been pushed further and further away from the city center. It's estimated that the fight for the city will eventually be a much classier effort than what both sides anticipated. Regardless, people around the world have no words for the sight of such a globally famous city now lying in smoldering debris. The war escalates. Well, it's France. Are you doing well here? I guess you are. Look at that. All right, just kill them off. You'll be fine. Government established. May the heirs of the past not be respeed. At Udo Pastors, Udo Voigt, Andreas Kolbitz, Dustin Heiss, uh, Frank Franz, Vivis, Bank, Austrian troops moving to Bavaria. Germany shall never be weak again. Wait, what? Bro. Austrian neutrality. Bro. You have to get smashed. Hard. Could revive the armed forces, but I want to deal with all this at first. Our national, our noble cause. Get another campaign slot. Re-enter Bavaria. Radicalize the masses. Revive the economy would be good too. But how about our noble cause? You know what? We're gonna go to war first. We're gonna re-enter Bavaria. With this done, I think the Greeks should have it done.
Hello. Oh, wait, it's in three. Um, tackle the riots. That'd be good. Tackle the riots. Order the police to immediately crack down on them. Institute martial law. Well, we already have no stability. What should we lose? Uh, I'll do this one. For now. Good job, guys. We're coming back home, but we might as well try to come down here first. Hope you learned a lot coming out here. Nice job, guys. Our noble cause. You're going in and going to exterminate them with radical intent. And you're going to destroy the Austrians, too, for doing this crap. Good, get to the border and circle and kill every single one of them last. Uh, the Sahel Federation Forums. Marking your sins of victorious war against the French neocolonialism, the Sahel Alliance has announced the federalization of the alliance and the new Sahel Federation. Large claiming large parts of Africa, especially Guinea. Africa's not trail. Look at this. Autocracy, encroaching Sahara. Okay. Government of National Defense. Resistant Gaulism. Versus the French Republic. Well, we we done what we can. Better recovery rate. Okay. Stabilize the regime. Yeah. Good. Austrians have had it too good for too long. Good. Look at all these divisions trapped here. Thank you for those who recommended playing as Germany and uh, saying just keep going with the game since uh, you're going to lose anyways, or they probably are going to lose. This is interesting. I like this. I'm glad there's even content after you lose a war. I love that. Good. Ascension of the Supreme Chancellor. As the German nation finally fall, claws itself back to the light of civilization, freeing itself from the neoliberal and savage rot, it's time to show the world the visionary who willingly well did. Ooh, that's good. Good to do, too. He's a patriot who, unlike the bureaucratic elite or unwashed foreigners, bled for his nation alongside hundreds of thousands of blooded Germans. Full blooded Germans. He's a statesman like no other who sees one who sees the problems that Germany society faces and knows how to fix them. He's an orator, one who can sway millions on his side in order to return Germany to its glory days. He's an executioner who will get his hands dirty to fix the issues our grandfathers created, no matter the cost. He's a leader uh, of our Supreme Chancellor, and with him, you're out, we'll drive back the Commons once for all. Maybe Germany be led back to greatness. Unmask him. Well, I see what have. Oh, this guy. I don't know who you are, but cool. Political power gains stability. Attack on defense of care territory. That's cool. Kill them all. 48, 50,000 casualties for what? Nothing. Well, at least we're going to unify all the German people again. We literally did this almost 100 years ago. And now we have to do it again. Well, what happened to all six What happened to you guys there, too? No planes in reserve? Uh, there you go. You need to actually just cast, cast stuff. Honorable cause. Forge an eternal alliance. Pact of steel. Where have I seen that before? Guiding hand. Sweden. Denmark. Oh, okay, cores. Ooh, I like that a lot. So we buy the economy first, maybe. Russians. Destroys the civilizations. Lose a lot of political power. Weekly war support. Oh, yeah. Oh, absolutely. Ultra militarism. National Spartanism is an ideology that rejects the modern lifestyle. Spouses reject modern comforts and luxury for a spiritual awakening. 
In an ideal Neo Spartan society, a person will live a minimalistic life working for the betterment of both himself and his nation. This society uses ancient spires as a basis for, to, from which to build upon, using its collectivist and militaristic identity to achieve their goals. Sounds good to me. What are we missing here? Amphibious landing. Wait, why do we need amphibious landing vehicles? I don't think we have any of those, do we? Improved armor. We don't have any of those. Oh, hello. Hello? Marines? Uh. Why did we get those? Forge an eternal alliance. Fall orange. Radicalize the masses. Coalition von Schwarz Waltz Weiss Rot. National Socialists join him. Room des Watterslands. We own Gibraltar. Oh! Are you? When do we get all this stuff? Oh, the menu is red too. Okay. Oh crap, I've ignored all this stuff for this entire time. Uh. Oh wow. Oh wait, why did we get all this stuff? German people state? I mean, don't get me wrong, I'll, I'll gladly take it. Yeah, these guys are dying like crazy. Uh, oh, hello. Revive the economy, of course. Drop the euro. JSC bills. Ooh. Defend industry. We have national catastrophe. That'd be good, too. We're sort of loop off a of pride. Rehabilitate the Kaiser. National service. Spirit of Klauswitz. Spirit of Bruchmüller. Spirit of Rommel. Panzer Pioneers. Armor Innovations. Better lessons from the European War. Soldiers of the Future. Revive the Fallschirmjäger. Guns of the Future. Chemical Warfare. Well, radicalize the masses. That sounds like fun to me. Stabilize the regime. Remove mass civil unrest, which would be good. The national economy. There's nothing here. Oh, the what the heck happened here? Princedom of Friesland. Yeah, he's kind of a handsome guy. Babylon, Berlin. Wow. Well, the Kingdom of Spain won. Neolibs have won once again. Absolute monarchy. Brick by brick. Martial law. And shared a workforce. That sounds pretty normal. American Jacobins reunite America. Oh boy. Today, thousands are marching throughout the streets of America, heralding the dawn of a new era. The American Jacobins have emerged victorious over rival factions in APLA, liberating the nation from all forms of oppression, whether from conservative industrial capital or liberal technocrats. American and red flags now adorn every conceivable corner of state buildings and houses, with the Washington, D.C. at the heart of that celebration. Here, Caleb Malpin, leader of the Jacobins, delivered an impassioned speech following the official declaration of the end of the Civil War. A numerous crowd gathered to hear his words. Huh. Fellow American citizens of the world, Comrades, Caleb's opening words ignited the crowd. As he concluded his speech, he raised his hands, holding Mao's little red book in his right hand and the Holy Bible on his left. With conviction, he proclaimed, I know where I've come from and I know where I'm going. Are you with me? With the crowd erupted into cheers and roars, their thunderous applause drowning out Malpin's subsequent um, uh, statements. For better or for worse, America's been reborn. Hallelujah. Second American Revolution. When one makes a revolution, one can uh, mark time. 
One must always go forward or go back. He who now talks about freedom of the press goes backwards and halts our headline course towards socialism. We got freight trains. Sure. It has been a one heck of an episode. I know the last few episodes have not been like super like energetic and exciting, but this has definitely turned into something here. Freight train twos. Ah, oh, just so much better, you see. Education in New Germany. Oh, uh, can we ask this if we brought it now? Oh, we need to forge an internal alliance first. Whether nation or claim, we're tasked with the reversal of self flagregation of our people. National revival. Oh, look at this. That's cool. National catastrophe is still pretty bad. Economic revival. For decades, we were taught to feel bad for our past, hate our own identity, as we traded our flag for di discussing mixed colors. Now we are now on our way to change our education. Pride in oneself and the nation is something. As they should be encouraged for too long to have schools been spewing self-hate propaganda. All the material that encourages behavior that harms our national identity will be banned, and with that, material that displays our history, heritage, and nation will be reintroduced again for future generations, so they may look at our nation with love and pride again. However, one issue remains in that regard. All of us are not all of us are aware of what our nation was during World War II. We've done things that not all of us are proud of, and among our leadership, there's been plenty of arguments whether we should encourage people to be proud of that period of our nation. Some of us argue that National Socialist Germany is in the same Germany as we are and that we would be better off to mainly attribute our pride in its military victories. As the other side are plenty of people that is that embrace fully the achievements of the National Socialists have achieved, albeit more quiet on their bloodthirsty acts. This isn't the most burning issue, as we all agree that German education needs a complete transformation, but it would be decided how our children would look at our past, present, and future, eventually shaping future generations. We're okay with the Nazis. Just, like, don't say out loud you're okay with the Nazis. We got plenty of war support right now, base value. Stability is actually better. Weekly change is going up too. Just don't say it out loud. Yeah, just don't say it out loud. Uh, praise the worker spirit. I right, get more weekly stability here. Tolerance was their undoing. Propaganda. Lose political power, get more weekly war sport. Monthly society development. Why they fought. Huh. Well, the Russians destroy civilizations. I'm kind of okay with all that. Even though I still. Oh, let's, let's take a look see here. Trade and economy quality. Oh my god! That's really bad. Um. It starts interest rates, but we got enough already, so it doesn't matter. But you know what? We're gonna just do all, all as many of these as we can. Hurt split apart, get more weekly stability, which I do like. Can't do enough another one of these, but that's alright. But I think I'm gonna there. People's Germany German people state, that's unique and interesting. I like it. I like that we still have stuff to do, and maybe we can go back to War of the Rush of it. Hello. You got trapped. But anyways, I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please consider leaving a like. Subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow. I'll see what else we can do with uh, good old fascist Germany. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.